<laughs> Hello there, everyone. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the slide. I have the slide up. <coughs> Excuse me. Great. Wonderful. Thanks for being here, everyone. Just was watching Netflix earnings, which came out tonight, and it is getting pounded. Stock is down big time right now. Uh, so very interesting to be watching the sell-off in that. Probably will be looking at that later this evening myself and tomorrow morning. Uh, but I'm going to talk to you here tonight about my training strategy. So you're lucky if you made it tonight because I'm going to discuss to you gaps. And it's been a really solid year so far this year. And this week has been great. Um, earnings season has started. And as I just said, Netflix had earnings tonight. It's happening right now live. And when stocks have earnings, they tend to gap. Now, there are many reasons that a stock may gap. Could be news, uh, could be the CEO got fired, who knows, a million, million different reasons, okay? <laughs> but I particularly like to watch stocks. So I will look at the market, but I prefer stocks, companies that you know, like, like I said, Netflix. So I'm gonna talk to you today and this evening but how you can make a six-figure income working 30 minutes a day, trading one strategy. I focus on one pick per day. Every time that I'm getting up in the morning, what I'm, my procedure, what I do, is I'm looking for one thing to trade daily. Today was CSX, and we will go over that in the webinar today. This is me. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to me at Melissa at thestockswish.com or call me at 929-3200-GAP. And you can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So a lot of people want to trade, but they don't know where to start. And then there's people that are trading and they found it difficult. And you know, it's very interesting because when I started out, it wasn't easy for me either. Now that was a long time ago, 11 years ago now, but I gradually stumbled into, actually it was Netflix, I did a gap one day and I made a lot of money. Of course, at that time, I didn't know what I was doing, but I realized you could make a lot of money with gaps. And then I totally focused on that. And then I developed my own system for choosing the right stock to trade daily. So that is what I do. And it really is about the focus. If you wanna make money in the market, you really only need one trade, one solid trade, one stock, one stock pick. And you can do it as a day trade or you can do it as an option, okay? Now, what do I look for? I'm looking for institutional money. Now, for those of you that don't know what that is, it's big, big buying or big, big selling. In the case of Amazon, this is monster buying. The stock is getting bought up. Institutions are buying Amazon. Now this is before today. I didn't see how this closed today. But the stock was back up near the previous highs, up here around 2050. And this was the rally in June and the rally in July. So institutions are buying the stock. The price of the stock notwithstanding, it is definitely getting bought, okay? Again, I think pretty much Everything fell today with the market. But institutional money is how you can profit as one individual trader, where you don't need to be necessarily taking a massive size to get a certain amount. Like people that trade penny stocks, which I don't do. I think they're junk. Or what they call low float stocks. I think that's junk too. When you have to take 20,000 shares or 10,000 shares of something to even make $1,000, that's just too risky, in my opinion. So that's not what I do. Taking 1,000 shares or 2,000 shares of a stock that moves $2, $3, $4 or more, now that's realistic, okay? And it's a much safer way to make money than stocks that have low volume, or again, what I was calling penny stocks or low float stocks, where you have to take this massive size, okay? Make sense? Now this was Crocs. This is an example of something that is not getting bought by institutions. I did not do this, but I'm showing you here the stock gap up, but I would not have gone long this. So Amazon is an example of buying. This is an example of something that isn't getting bought by institutions. Although it had a rally, it was really day traders or little traders. 
not institutions, okay, in this stock. This just happened recently. I think this was this week or last week. So when you actively day trade, there's no overnight risk, okay? You're in control of your money. You're in between 9.30 and 4. You're in and out. And so, again, because you're trading on margin when you day trade, you can take a bigger position than you could if you were in and overnight. You get in, you get out, in, out. You could be in and out of position in five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, very, very quickly, okay? So it's important to understand where the momentum, again, is coming in, okay? And any questions, I'll just write in here. If you have any questions, just write it in the room. I'll see it. And I'll answer the question out loud. <laughs> okay? I'm the only one who can see everybody's questions. But anyways, when you're actively trading, the returns can be incredible. And even doing options. Options are day trades. And it's because when you think about it, say if you put your money in a savings account. I mean, I think today you could probably get around 2% um, if that. But the fact is that, you know, it takes a long time to earn that. When you think, how can you turn your money over? When you're day trading, you can turn your money over one in a day, sometimes two or three. So say you risk 500 bucks, you could turn that $500 into another $500, which would mean then you'd start with 500, risking the 500 and then have 1,000 when all is said and done. And that's the benefit of looking to actively day trade. It's not passive investing. You're in, you're out quickly, okay? And again, there are high returns when you look at it versus investing, which is one of the reasons that I'm comparing it. Because I think a lot of people are into this thing where they're thinking the buy and hold philosophy. That buy and hold philosophy is not what this is about. This isn't long-term investing. Although I've read long-term trends in stocks in the market, that's not what this is. If you're trying to make money as an active trader, then active is exactly what it is. You're in and you're out. You're in and you're out, okay? So it's a way of producing income. You're getting the fast moves, the quick moves, whatever that happens to be. And we're looking for the fast moves in the first half an hour of the day, all right? So you're putting your money in for the risk, but it's not like long-term investing. So you have to think of it in a broader spectrum and understand that a lot of people are used to buy low, sell high, and holding, holding, holding. That's not what day trading is, okay? So when you have goals, I say to look at your goals in the bigger picture. If it helps you to break it down, which I find for many people it does, you look at it per year, per week, per day. This does not mean that you'll never have a losing day. Some days you will have losing days. Some trades do not work. My system is about an 80% win ratio. So that means of every 10 trades, eight will win and two will fail. So you have to account for that. And that's one of the reasons that I use stops and I teach people to use stops. It's important. It's like the insurance, okay? But you chunk it out. So over the course of a week, over the course of a, a month, you are profitable, okay? Actually, we haven't had a losing day in quite a while here. Uh, even, even though earnings season just started, I've been extremely focused. Um, so let's talk about BBBY. BBBY was a gap down that happened just back early July. It was on the 11th. Here it is. Stock closed here, gap down. Now, what is a gap? For those of you that don't know, it's the difference between the close and the open. The stock closed here the night before around 11.50 and opened in the morning around 11. And we shorted it. This tally thing here is where we shorted it. We got in and out. And it's hard to see this here, but the stock dropped. Now I'm gonna show it to you in a one minute time frame what we did. So the stock closed up here, gap down, we shorted it, and we got the drop. And this is all that you need to make money as a day trader. This doesn't look like much, but it is. It's real money. How do you get this kind of money out of this? directional bias, getting the direction right and getting the entry right and getting the pick to know to get this sell off to come into it, which is exactly what we did. So share quantity in this. Again, this is an advanced trader risk, although I'm going to go over beginner risk. 8,000 shares. And you could take this much size in a stock like this because it has volume. Stop is 11.05. Risk is 18.40. Entry 10.82. Exit 10.61. So you short it, boom, 
get the drop out and actually I think the low in here ended up being 1040 or 1030 or something I have to go back so that you could have even made more in this we had a we had a quick exit on this but again in out in out that's your job as a trader you're chunking it out okay Total profit $1,680. So a really, really, really nice move in, uh, in, a, in a fast time frame, which again is what I'm trying to focus on. Quick, quick moves, okay? So that was, I think that was last week. This is an, a, a beginner risk. A lot of people say, well, do you need a lot of money to trade? No, you need $2,500 minimum to open up a proprietary day trading account and 2,000 for an options account. Share quantity for beginner is 800. You would have risked $184 and you could have made $168. This is in less than 15 minutes, 10 minutes out of your day and you're done. So a lot of people, if they have other jobs, transitioning from a day trader uh, actually is something that's doable because they can trade in the morning and then go off to work. And if you're in a time zone that's earlier than the market, it's also beneficial. Now Bill is asking a question, let's go back. I get this question a lot. And Bill, I think you were in some other webinar when you asked this or maybe it was somebody else. Bill's asking about, he says, this is his question. So you put $86,000 into that trade. No. Bill's asking about something that's a question that I get a lot that I should just do a whole lecture on on uh, YouTube, actually. When you're an active day trader, you day trade on something called margin, okay? So margin is you get margin from the broker. So this is not a position where you are buying the stock and you are actually getting the stock from the actual uh, broker and you're hauling the stock or you're getting the stock certificate. This is trading on margin. Every active day trader trades on margin. Some people trade four to one margin. Some people trade on two to one margin. Some people trade on 10 to one margin, okay? So say you have a stock, and I'm just gonna make it easy here, that is an $11 price point, even though the century was under 11 bucks. 11 times 8,000 is what? 88,000. That's not $88,000 in cash and dollars and cents. That's 88,000 in margin. So if you have a prop account with 10 to 1 margin, how much cash would you need? You would need $8,600 or $8,800 because I'm using the 11 by 8 example. If you had a retail account, you must have a minimum of 25,000 to trade, in which case you would have had that in here to take this trade with a four to one account. I think a lot of people are not familiar with margin and that's shocking to me, but I really should do a whole lecture on that. And Bill, obviously you're not familiar with margin. You did not need 86,000 or $88,000 in cash to do this. It was a use of margin. In a prop account, it would have been 8,800 and change. And in a retail account, you must have 25,000 in order to trade at a retail place and the margin's four to one. So you'd have a minimum of 100,000, which would have allowed you to take this position. Does that make sense, Bill? And anyone else that doesn't understand margin, ask me. Ask me. Because this is an important aspect of trading. This is margin is what allows regular people to actually actively trade. If everybody needed a half a million dollars or a million dollars in cash to take any sizable position, it would really limit the number of active traders in the market. And there are there are a lot of places, again, you know, it's up to you where you want to trade, but there are some places that give huge margin, 20 to 1 margin. Uh, someone's saying they can't hear me, Kathy. Can everybody hear me? I don't I don't I honestly don't know how to turn up my volume anymore. Kathy, you can let me know or can everybody hear me? I'm on top of my mic here at my desk. Maybe turn your volume up, H5. Um, Kathy, are you there? I don't know how to turn up the volume on Hotcom, but it's up on my, I'm on my mic. So, Bill, do, do you understand what I just explained about margin? In fact, let's look up let's look up Netflix. Since we're on this topic here, I'm gonna pull up Netflix because Netflix is expensive. It's an expensive stock. So this is gonna be a good example here. Now I'm not in anything in this right now, and I don't know if I'm gonna do this tomorrow, but I might. But let's make a pretend example here. So 
Netflix, okay. Say you wanted to short Netflix tomorrow, and I'm just making this up. Don't anybody do this trade. I just want to give this example here for Bill's question. Say you wanted to short Netflix at 320, okay? So say you want $320 a share is what it costs. So that's very expensive. If you wanted to take a thousand shares times 320 per share, you would need 320,000 in margin, not cash, but that's still a lot of margin. So you would need, let's divide that by four if you had a retail account. You would need 80,000 in cash in a retail account, or you would need 32,000 in a prop account with 10 to one margin. Now, what's another way? Say you don't have either one of those. Say you don't have 32,000 and say you don't have 80,000 and you want to trade Netflix, say you get up in the morning, you really like it, you rate the gap, it's gorgeous, it's fabulous, whatever, you really want to do it. What could you do? You could do an option in it, okay? You could do an option. Yes, Robert's got it. So this is another way to trade it. Now, I don't think this is going to be cheap tomorrow. I could be wrong. I have no idea where this opens tomorrow and I have, I'm not going to rate it tonight because tomorrow is a long way away and the stock could look completely different. It could be at 300 tomorrow morning. It could be at 340 tomorrow morning. So I just, I'm going to wait till tomorrow morning to watch Netflix. But I will tell you that it may or may not be cheap. But even something that would be expensive or what I would consider expensive for an option in this will still probably be completely worth it, meaning cheaper than what you would need to short the stock outright that you need any margin at all. So let's pretend that you, that one contract, which equals 100 shares, Okay, let's pretend the cost of it is seven. So that means you'd pay what? $700 for one or 100 shares. Now that pretty much anybody could do. If you, I mean, you have to have $2,000 in a trading account to even trade options. So again, that's a better way to do it. Now, there are some stocks that we trade though that don't make any sense to do options, so I don't call options trades in them. And the trades I call in the day trading live room are different than the trades on the options letter. Most of the options that we do though tend to be expensive because it just makes more sense. However, uh, a stock like this, I might do both. I might day trade it and do options. But either way, that's another way to take advantage of trading the stock without having to even conceive or worry about margin but you do need to um, make sure you get the, the cost of it right with the strike of it right, with the expiration period right. And I don't wanna to get too off topic here about talking about options, uh, but that is another way that you can use my system. And I do have an options newsletter that you can sign up for just to get the trades. And there's no prerequisites for that. But all in all, there's many ways to be active in the market to make money without having to have 88 grand or, or you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars, okay? Look at this here, this is really tanking. So Galahad thought this was up, so I'm glad nobody did any trades in this. I had considered doing a trade in both directions in this as an option, knowing one would go bust. I almost did that. I sort of wish I would have now, but I knew either way this was gonna have a big move. I was right, I was definitely right. I didn't do that. I would have taken two trades. One would have worked huge and one would have been a loss. I thought about doing that for about the last 24 hours and I've never done that before because I hate to take something in both directions. I didn't do it. I didn't call the trade. I kind of wish I had here now looking at this. I knew this would have a big move. But I'm not going to rate this because it's really difficult to say where this is going to go tomorrow now because you can see here as we're talking, it just dropped two and a half bucks. So this is... This could be it. This could have a two in front of it by tomorrow morning. I, and it's just really hard to say where, what it's going to do tomorrow until I get up. And let's just get back to where we were. Okay, so does that make sense? Okay. So different ways to trade the stock. Uh, and it's affordable no matter what you want to do, really. But you do have to know how to place an option trade. It's different from an equity trade. It's not exactly the same, but you can use my system, the Golden Gap system, okay, you can use to do in either way because you're just trying to get the direction. That's all that it is. You've got to get the direction right. How are you going to make money in something like this BBBY? It drops. 
how are you going to get money in something like, I don't know, I can't think of anything right now that's rallying, but some, a stock that would be rallying, um, then you have to go long it, okay? Now let's talk about CSX. This was today. This was the hilarious thing about this today is I really did like this and I held on to this what I thought was a good period of time. It fell off a planet very late in the morning, which was really hilarious. Um, but again, I think that our goal as a traders are to get in and get out with profit. But this ended up dropping ridiculously more after we got out. And sometimes that happens. Let's look at this. What happened here? It got sold off. Stock closed here the night before around 79.50, boom. Open in the morning around 73.25. It was a short. So we shorted this in the day trade room today, boom, and it dropped. This is not a bad price point, I don't think, in the 70s. I did not call any options in it. I could have actually, looking back at the move that it made. Uh, but anyways, this was a nice day trade, and I'm going to show it to you here. So we shorted this, and then here's the drop, boom. And I thought we had a beautiful exit on this, actually, because we waited till it broke through, and then it completely fell like another $2, which is really funny. But share quantity in this 2,500, risk 1840, entry 7290, exit was 7208. Again, this ended up going to like 70 something. I think in the low, it might've even been 69, which is crazy, but a good solid day. Again, 2,050 bucks, good, solid, solid, solid profit, okay? And again, in a very quick period of time, because we did the trade, we got in and out, in and out, in and out. And that's your goal as of every day that you trade. So profit on this, if you took a beginner risk, would have been 200 bucks. Again, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, okay? And again, these are equity trades where you would trade with margin. You could have done an option in it. I did not, and I didn't call any. But honestly, if I had known it was gonna go the way that it did, I might have, but it had a big move. Market fell today and dragged everything down with it. Any questions here so far? Okay, I'm gonna keep going. So one of the things I focus on as well is risk per trade, meaning your risk per trade should be close to the same. So you can't risk $500 in one trade and then $2,000 in another trade. Well, that's gonna screw you up because then inevitably the one trade that you take where you risk 2,000 will lose and the one that you risk 500 will win. And then you'll be upside down having one winner and one loser. So the goal is to try to closely, as close as you can. Again, this isn't an exact science. And we're trying to get the trades quickly. And sometimes I have an amount in that I think it's going to be for the stop. Sometimes I'm a little over it. Sometimes a little under it. That's okay. Excuse me. But what I said earlier is true, though. You don't want to be double, triple, quadruple. That is what will screw you up. Okay. So it's a consistency in the system. The consistency in the sizing and then getting the move. So I don't take a set size every day of the share quantity. Some days I may take 1,000, some days I may take 5,000. I just don't know. I don't know what the entry is and the stop is until I see the gap, until I see the setup, and this is happening live, okay? So one of the nice things about trading is I do live in New York, but I don't have to live in New York. I really could move anywhere in the world. I could, I could move to Europe, Europe if I wanted to. So I can go anywhere and do this. Why? Because all you need is an internet connection and a brokerage account somewhere where you can get live active charts and you can see what's happening in the market, but you can live anywhere in the world. And so that makes it convenient to do this. Any questions here so far? Now we will talk a little bit about options now. I did have one option example I wanted to put in here. This was actually, this was a good exit on this. So this had a rally, this was the diamonds, okay? And I had called this before this rally began. So this is again is the option letter. This is the ETF for the Dow. I called on Wednesday, July 10th, the 270 calls expiring the 19th, which isn't, isn't until Friday. This, when I call an expiration date, you don't have to hold it. And again, I think booking money is very important in this market. But so here's the 10th. So I called it here and then it rallied. So it moved up into the number through the strike and rallied into the period, okay? And again, I, I don't see any reason why anybody wouldn't have gotten out of this, 
But the fact is that it had the immediate move up. And that's something that I, I really try to capitalize on as much as I can. Again, it doesn't mean that every trade that I do like this works, but a lot do. But this is what I aim to do each time. Boom, 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 boom. And that's what I'm going to try to do with Netflix. Again, if it, get, if it rates well. So my system looks for gaps, but in order to find the right pick, it has to meet my criteria. So that's why I don't know what I'm doing with Netflix yet, because I don't know the criteria, because I can't rate it, because the stock is moving right now. And it's going to be moving all night, and it's going to be moving tomorrow morning. In fact, I may rate it quite late. So I'm looking for something in live time that I'm seeing, that I want to rate that's going to meet the criteria to know to be able to predict the direction, because I'm trying to get it in and out very, very quickly, okay? Anyways, this was a nice trade. Advanced trader risk, you would have taken 50. Again, we're talking about not using margin. This is not margin. You pay the cost of the contract. One contract costs $1.30. So if you're a beginner, you could have bought five contracts and paid 650 bucks, bought it for 130, sold it at three, and then made $850. So that is a good trade. You risk 650, you made 850. Advanced risk 6,500, you could have bought 50 contracts. And again, this is one of the reasons I like to trade things that have volume because you can take 50 contracts in this. Profit 8,500, this is in the diamonds. And again, I'm gonna go back, called it on the Wednesday, right into the open, and here's the move. Take it, get out, boom, boom, okay? This is a series of days, so this is an option. You can day trade options or hold them for a day or two, or you can actively trade stocks, which is what I was showing you in the trades from today. So any questions about anything I've talked about so far here tonight? What's happening with IBM, Galahad? Because I know IBM was out tonight too on eBay. If you want to look those up quickly, I will pull those up. Any questions from anybody so far? And Bill, do you understand margin? I don't think it's necessarily for people that have to have to trade full time. If you enjoy what you're doing for your job, you don't have to trade full time, but it's a way to make extra money. And it's a way for people to feel a little bit more independent. And I think that's important. And I think a, a people, some people want to trade for, a, for their career and they don't want to do their other job, but they hate their job, or they don't like their hours or they work too many hours or they work weekends or whatever. But the fact is that the idea of just being able to make more money, that is very, very, very important, okay? And I don't think anybody could say, well, it would be nice to, to have, you know, feel that they have their retirement account set, have no mortgage, all of these things, cars paid off, all that kind of stuff that people think about, and particularly if you have kids. So you can do this for a career, but you don't have to. It's a way to make extra money that doesn't involve a lot of time out of your life. So I talk to people about trading and People, you know, have learned and done different classes. You know, I was one of those people that took a class initially when I first started. I did not learn how to make money in that class, but I learned some basic technical analysis, and that was important. And then I ended up trading live and creating my own system, and I learned from the market. The market was a very difficult teacher. I created my own system over a course of three years, and I traded live money, and I lost and made money back and forth until I figured it out. That is a long, hard road. I don't think it's a road that many people can travel financially, emotionally, and you know all of, the, all of it. So it's easier to pay someone else to learn their system. Now, while not every system out there is good, that's true. It doesn't mean that there's no good systems. There are people out there that know how to trade. I'm one of them. There are people that have good systems. I'm one of them too. But you may, it's just like dating. You may have to kiss a bunch of different frogs in order to meet the right prince. And you may take a, a lot of bum classes until you come up with one that's good. And that's just the nature of the beast. Again, unless you teach yourself how to do it. Is the time frame always swing for these trades? Or can you do this in an intraday day platform? Uh, Illis, you signed in late, so you didn't hear the discussion. Uh, the options newsletter and the options trades you can get in and out of one day if you want, or you can hold them. In this case here, it wouldn't have made sense to get out on the day because the day that I called the trade, it didn't have a move yet, so you wouldn't have gotten out, okay? Now, we talked before you signed in about day trades. This is CSX. This was today's trade. This was a day trade. I don't think you should be in this overnight, and I did not call any options in this. This was an equity trade. This was a day trade. It was in, out, in, out. So I do both. 
And there are many traders in the room that do both. Some people only do options. Some people only do day trades. Some people in the room do both. I do think it's important to do both because why not? You can make money doing both. And like I said about the expensive things, like Netflix, for example, it makes sense because a lot of people may not feel comfortable day trading Netflix or have the margin, but will be able to do the option trade and make money if in fact it sets up properly, which again, I don't know, but I'm talking about it anyways. IBM is up, okay. What about eBay? Um, Illis has another question, go ahead. Anyways, if you wanna do this for a career, that's fine, but I still think it's important to transition so you gain the confidence. One of the things that I find that is so difficult for people is that um, they lack confidence. They really lack confidence in what to do. I have a lot of confidence. It doesn't mean that every decision that I make is, is correct as far as the choices. Some trades fail, but I'm so confident in every trade I take, I believe will work. And that confidence allows me to be successful. But a lot of it has to do with the fact that I did create the system myself. I made it up myself, I, I know it. I know it well, I've been doing this now for 11 years and I have a lot of conviction in it. But again, it doesn't mean that every trade works, otherwise I would take unlimited risk in every trade and I never put a stop in and that would just be foolish. But the fact is that every time I take a trade, I 100% believe it will work. So that's kind of a different mindset, I think, than a lot of people. I'm very, very confident in myself and what I do, but a lot of people aren't. And how do you build that confidence? You make money. So until you get the confidence yourself in the system, you actually have to learn from someone where you're kind of piggybacking off of their confidence, piggybacking off of their trades. Does that make sense? Um, you have a lot of intraday BP available as a prop trader. Yeah, then that's fine. Again, you can trade a prop account, uh, you can trade a retail account, whatever, okay? So I'm usually focused, again, between 30 and 60 minutes a day. That is the time that I'm focused on, really, to get these trades. If you want to do this for a career, the benefits are what? Work from home, only working a half an hour, an hour a day, like the trade this morning was done in less than an hour. You don't have to trade five days a week if you don't want to. And you have unlimited potential. Uh, you know, you have unlimited potential for what you could do because the only thing holding you back is your own knowledge of getting good at it and what? The risk, which your risk has to go with the size of your account. How do you grow your account? Take positive trades, book money, take good solid trades, get the wins, book them, okay? So any questions before I continue going? eBay is up. I'll look at those two things. I'm surprised that two, they're both up. Um, but anyways, there's, there's pros and cons. I mean, obviously, it's, you have to learn it. Some people take my class and they are ready to go right out of the gate and they do great immediately the Monday after the class. Some people have a learning curve. It's really, you know, it's really up to you. I don't know everybody individually and personally. It takes time to get to know people. So I don't know what everybody's learning curves are going to be, but I know you don't have to have an experience before coming to me to learn how to trade. I go over everything, including candlesticks in the class. But I do think it's important to have a focus. I do think it's important to have a strategy. I only do golden gaps. That's all that I do. I don't listen to anything else. I don't look at fundamentals, okay? And if you're not successful and you're losing money in the market, you really kind of have to take a step back because you need to be profitable. Half the year, more than half the year is over. And if you're losing money trading this year, you're, you're either on a path to continue losing money for the rest of the year or you're going to do something to change it. It's pl you have plenty of time left in the year to change it. But if you're losing money from January 1 until July 17th, then you're going to continue losing money until the end of the year unless you do something different. And most of the time what I find for people that is actually the strategy, people say, well, I'm not disciplined, this and that. Well, that may be part of it. But if you had a good strategy, you would make money even with crappy discipline. It is really about having something where you can determine the directional bias in something that you're doing to make money. So there's lots of benefits to trading. We've been talking about them. Let's talk a little bit about my system. So I have a checklist. Netflix, I will get up tomorrow morning and I will rate it. I do this every morning. I do not skip it. I don't eyeball it every day. For the last 11 years, I do it. I measure gaps by rating them in the daily chart to find stocks to trade that have, number one, a high probability of directional bias for the entire day, hopefully, or a big move, which CSX had today. Big move in the day, early confirmation of the bias in the move between 9.30 and 10 a.m., and precise entries with follow-through and a good risk-to-reward target potential. 
So I'm really, really looking for a solid move, like, like I showed you in that day trade in CSX, but that had a bigger move then. So it's up to you if you do a second trade in it or if you hold it, you know, but you can pay for the course in a few trades if you sign up and take my trades in the room. You must take my class to join the room, okay? That is a prerequisite. Now the options letter, you do not. You could sign up for the options letter if you want and, and you can join that letter. It's a one year annual subscription and you don't have to do the class, but I think you will do better in the options trades if you know the system. Also, you have to keep in mind, if I ever decide that I don't want to teach anymore and you are on the options letter and you don't know the system, how are you gonna, you won't get the trades anymore. How are you gonna know how to figure out the trades yourself? So it is important to really learn it and understand it and it will help you trade better and it will help you make more money. Any questions here so far? But for me, it's just about honing in on that one thing, trying to get the most bang for my buck, which I'm usually looking for one to one or more if I'm expecting a big move. I'm very consistent in the trading room. We're usually focused on shorts and hard to believe, but we've been doing more longs in the options letter this year, more calls, and we have shorts for the whole year from January through now. So you never know. Um, but you can use my system for day trading, swing trading, and options trading. So the Golden Gap system is a 26 point professional bearish gap rating system. The purpose of this system is to help you evaluate which gap to trade each morning using a checklist. The checklist tells you what to trade, when, and in what direction. The 26 point checklist predicts directional bias in a stock. Okay, and so that is essential. It's essential. And when you're looking to do this, again, one pick a day, two picks a day. In earnings season, it's busy. There's a lot of gaps. I may rate five, six things in the morning. I may rate 10, but it doesn't mean I'm not doing them all. Now, tomorrow, we'll see. I'm probably going to be 100% focused on Netflix. Um, but, like, there are days where I will look at two things. Like, yesterday, we looked at uh, DPZ and GS. So I did look at two things yesterday. So you never know. If I feel that I want to watch two things, I will. But it's usually one. But either way, they have to rate well, they have to meet the criteria. It's important though to be focused. And I think that's one of the reasons that I'm successful. You keep your losses lower when you have a focus and then your wins are higher because you have conviction of what you're doing with the focus. If you're all over the place with different strategies and different reasoning and rationale for following something or doing a trade or taking a trade, then what are you really gonna hone in on? For me, it's the price action. It's the price action in gaps, okay? So one strategy is all you need to be successful in the market. And I think that's the takeaway from here tonight. If you take away one thing, that is it. You do not need a general overall broad-based view to make money. Tons of people have that and they fail. And they fail all the time, okay? So learn how to read institutional money and price patterns and gaps and you don't need to do anything else. Because if, you, if your reason for doing this is to make money, okay, this will make you money. You have to follow what institutions are doing it. Are they buying it? Are they selling it? Any questions here so far? Thanks, Galahad. Yeah, I'll, I'll look at all this tomorrow. I just, I just wonder what the big names were doing. So if you, if you have time between 9.30 and 10, if that fits your schedule, then you can use my system. If, you, if you're okay with the in and out quick, the active day trades, again, you trade an account with margin. And again, you'd be doing this from home, or if you have an office where they let you set up your computer and trade, that's fine too. But you can do this for a career if you want, or you can do it part-time. You don't, either way, the hours are not full-time hours. Like I have time to do many other things during the day. In fact, today, I was cleaning out my closet. I did a little summer, summer closet cleaning today. That's what I did. Done early in the morning today by 10.30, spent the whole day organizing my closet. Now I'm doing a webinar and I'm done. So, I mean, you don't have to sit at the computer all the time. I'm also on TV. I mean, so, you know, it, you really have a lot of time to do stuff. And if I was married and had kids, I'd be with the kids. You know, it's summer. So it's, it's just a nice, nice way to make money if you are passionate about doing it. There is a price to pay, though. There's a price to pay to join my room, to, to, to do the class, to learn it. And obviously, you have to be able to open up an active account to take the trades whether it's an options account or a day trading account. So actually, speaking of TV, I had to move the class. Originally, I was going to have the class this weekend, and now the date has been changed because I'm on Fox News on Saturday. 
So the class is really going to be now, This is and this is set in stone, July 27th and 28th, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Cost of the class is $59.99 U.S. dollars. Class is online. Now, I am doing a holiday special. That is not being extended. That is through this Friday, July 19th. If you want to sign up for this class, again, it's July 27th and 28th, then you can sign up by this Friday and you would get the trading room free until the end of the year and the options that are free until the end of the year. This is a nice deal. It's that you just pay the price for the class and you get both free to the end of the year. And again, this expires this Friday. Class has now moved out a week, okay? And if you're around on Saturday morning, I'll be on Cavuto Live at 10 a.m. Uh, let's look at what the market's doing quickly in IBM, I'll look at. See, Netflix has fallen even more. So 314. I was so certain that would have a big move, I was right. In fact, where did that close today? 362. All right, let's look at the see if this is this is this is pulling the market down. Interesting. So Netflix is pulling the market down a bit. Not a lot, just a small amount. Let's take a look at IBM. IBM is up 149, 149. I'm not crazy about this. What was the other one? eBay. Definitely Netflix is a top watch. I just have to see what it's going to be doing tomorrow. It's just so too early. It's dropped $6 since I've been talking. eBay's up. Actually, this is pretty good. eBay is up, and this looks like a nice solid long, and this is on its own, and Netflix is down, and it's too soon to say what we're going to do with that. Does anyone have any questions about anything at all? It's been an interesting year. Uh, the market has behaved quite well this year, if you look at the way that it behaved the last quarter of 2018. But I don't think all is said and done. Even though the market's behaved very, very well for the first six and a half months of the year, I think we're going to have volatility. I thought we would have before now. We haven't really yet, but it is coming. So this makes for good trading. Volatility makes for good trading. The moves I'm showing these stocks like eBay, IBM, and Netflix, this makes for good trading. But you got to get it in the right direction. And CSX, I'll just pull this up really quickly. We'll look at what the low of the day was. This was so hilarious. We waited forever for this to drop. I was glad that I waited, and then it ended up going to 70. It went $2 past the morning exit. Can you believe that? Beautiful sell-off in that. Nice trade. Anyone have any other questions? So I'm doing an open house this week if you want to come Thursday, Friday. Email me if you want to come, melissa at thestockswish.com. If you're interested in the class or the options letter, I have questions, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. But the options letter is, is something nice if you're not familiar with day trades, but you get it free to the end of the year with the class this, not this weekend, I'm sorry, next weekend. So you could be in the day trade ring room too. And the day trading room, I go over the market every day, so that's very beneficial to be there. And just to hear what, I, what I'm saying live about stuff that we're doing. What did DPZ do today? Let's look. Oh, that was a good exit on that yesterday, too. All right, any questions from anyone at all? Netflix is the big watch for tomorrow. I will rate it in the morning. You're welcome to come to the open house. Just email me. I will send you the link. H5 has a question. Did you hear the webinar? We're done a little early, but that's okay. I was up early today. I'm tired. And I'm going to need all my brain energy in the world tomorrow for Netflix. I don't necessarily know if that's going to be easy either. Trading Room Open House is Thursday and Friday. If you want to email me at melissathestockswish.com, and we'll send you the information here. Any other questions, though, from anybody else? I think it's important to take trading seriously. I think if you do, you can do well. And that's kind of the attitude I've always had. 
That's one of the reasons why I make people take the class before joining the room. It's been good to teach people. It's been good to ha reinforce that discipline for people to be successful. Um, and it's just, it's a good program. Thanks for coming, everyone. Uh, H5, are you typing? Galahad, you didn't take any trades at Netflix to the upside before the earnings, did you? I was almost going to buy a call and buy a put. I was going to buy the 330 puts, and I was going to buy the 387.50 calls, and I didn't do it. But one would have gone bust, and one would have more than covered the difference. I just, I just didn't do it. Um, on any given day, uh, it depends. People, some people are signed up for the room but don't come every day, H5. So, to be honest with you, I don't know the exact number of members anymore. It's close to 100, but not everybody comes every day. Like, one lady's a nurse. She's only there three days out of the week. So, some days it's packed. Some days only half the people are there. Comes and goes. Uh, not everybody that's done the class is in the room. So, you know, sometimes people do the class, they join the room, and they might be in the room the first year, and then after that, they decide to go out on their own. So you don't have to be in the room because you're gonna learn the system, you learn what I know in the class, but I think the first year it's helpful. First couple of months, I definitely think it's helpful um, just to have my guidance. But, I, I, you know, there are people that have been in the room for since I started that still pay every year to rejoin the room. It just makes it easier for them, so they like to be in the room. So it's a mix. New people, old people, but not everybody I've taught. But the numbers fluctuate because sometimes uh, people just would rather trade on their own. You know, I was just going to outright buy the put and outright buy the call. I was just going to just do two separate, completely tra different trades. But I never did that before. And I mean, one would have gone bust and one would have worked. The 330 puts would have worked and they would have been $12 under it. But the but the calls, I don't know, the last time I looked, I think it were seven. So it, it, it would have it would have it would have paid, but it wouldn't have been like astronomical, like 20 plus or something like so. We'll just we'll just see what this does tomorrow. You have to take the class before you join the chat room. And please don't ask me for an exception because I'm not going to make it for you. Everyone that's in the room is a student. And it really benefits you as well because what are you going to do if I stop running the room one day? You'd be left out in the cold. Ilse has a question. Go ahead. Um, Ills, I have like one bazillion videos on YouTube. Uh, the last tracking video I think I did was, I don't know, it might be the end of May, beginning of June. I don't know. If you email me, I'll find the video and send it to you for year to date numbers. Bazillion. I do have a bazillion videos on YouTube though. Okay, good. Listen, let's have a good night. Sleep tight. Get organized. If you're interested in the open house, email me. We'll be ready to conquer Netflix in the morning after a good night's rest, and we'll see what we get. Very good. All right, have a good day, everyone.